Hi everyone and welcome to our video on monogenic inheritance. So in this video we'll be looking at the specification reference 6.1.2b part 1 genetic diagrams to show patterns of inheritance with that focus on monogenic inheritance. So before we really delve into this whole idea of monogenic inheritance too much let's have a little bit of a scientific history lesson and hopefully we all recognize this delightful little fellow on the left Gregor Mendel, sometimes known as the father of genetics. Now, he was obviously around a little while ago now, back in 1866 was when his work was actually published. And what he did, and I know people think this sounds really dull, but he worked with peas. He spent a long time studying his peas. He loved those peas. And thanks to his joy and love of pea plants, we now have an understanding of genetics. He was the one that started a lot of this. So what he did, the reason he picked peas wasn't just because he thought, I'm a real pea lover, let's go with that. But he knew that they were easy to grow. And in addition to that, they had these very clear, distinct, contrasting traits. And basically, when he was looking at them, they were either going to be one thing or another. So any of these traits he picked, there were two options for it. And I've given you just some of the examples there, things like the pod shape, the pod colour, the seed shape, the seed colour. Not an exhaustive list, but just four examples. Now, before he started his work, what he needed was a good solid baseline. He needed these plants to be something he was sure of. So he got what we call true breeding strains from the local merchants. Now, we refer to them as true breeding strains because basically these are characteristics that aren't going to change over many generations. If you had green pea plants, then they would have been green pea plants for many generations and they will produce green pea plants as well. And what he actually did was when he then started doing his experiments with these pea plants, he kept very detailed records of his work. The sign of a good scientist there, we're keeping detailed records, which then provides us with evidence to obviously formulate our different hypotheses and obviously draw conclusions from. Now, what we're going to do this time is we're going to be focused on the simplest of his experiments, the mono hybrid cross. So what we're looking at here, mono literally means one. So what we're looking at here is individuals of two different parent strains are going to be bred together for a single characteristic. Now, we are going to start with this example here, a tall stemmed plant being bred with a short stemmed plant. So what we need to do then is we need to have a little look to see how we do one of these monohybrid crosses with our tall and our short stemmed plants. So we're going to have a look at this in two different ways. We're going to have a little look at this more lengthy set out, if you like, so working line by line, and then we'll have a look at Punnett squares as well. So you've got the two options available to you. First of all, then, the parent phenotype. This is looking to see what those original characteristics were that we saw. So we obviously had tall stemmed, and they were going to be crossed with short stemmed. So that's our actual phenotype, tall stem, short stem. Then we need to think about the genotypes. Now, the genotypes in this case, because they are true breeding, then what we are going to have are two of the same alleles. And we're going to use T's in this case. So what we actually have, the tall ones, given capital T's, the short ones, lowercase t's. We then need to work out the genotypes of our gametes. Now, if the tall plant is homozygous, so they're both the same, then quite simply the gamete will just be a capital T. And same thing here, if we've got homozygous recessive, then the gamete will only have the option of being a lowercase t. So what we're going to do, cross those together, and what then happens is as these two come together, we end up with our F1 genotype. So this first generation phenotype, genotype, sorry. Now, capital T, lowercase t, that means we have got one of each available. We then need to work out the phenotype, so the actual trait that we would see. 
because we've got one capital letter that is our dominant trait therefore they are all going to be tall stemmed okay so every single one of them i'll put all tall would be tall stemmed in this case so if we start with one tall parent true breeding one short parent true breeding again we end up with all tall offspring But that's not the end of the tale. We then need to know what happens with this F1 cross. OK, so what we have our F1 phenotype. Remember, this is going to be tall stemmed. And tall stemmed because they were all tall. Remember, their genotypes in this case are going to be one capital and one lowercase. These are heterozygous. And when we split these into the individual gametes, then what we have is a capital T and a lowercase t on this side, a capital T and a lowercase t on the other side. Now, one thing that you've probably noticed me doing here is putting the gametes into a circle. That's just our scientific way of denoting the gamete in these diagrams. Next up, we've got to work out the F2 genotype. So the way this works is we are going to require one from our first parent and one gamete from our second parent. So we've got that coming through first of all. We're then obviously going to have the option that this could also come through and that's going to have potentially have combined with the other one from the other parent. Then we've got our next option, which is our lowercase t joining with a capital T. Uh, what colour haven't I used? Let's go blue this time. And we then got our lowercase t joining with the other lowercase t. So what we end up with then, if we follow our lines and hopefully the different colours have helped a little bit, We've got a capital T with a capital T, capital T with a lowercase, lowercase and a capital and lowercase, lowercase. So they're the potential genotypes of the offspring. Then we need to work out their phenotypes. As soon as we see a capital, we know it's going to be tall. So that one's tall, that one's tall, tall and a little shorty at the end. Now, what we could see from that is that he actually ended up with this ratio of our phenotypes of three to one, three of the dominant trait, one of the recessive trait. And so he kind of had this idea at that point that, you know what, I think this might be a thing that we're going to get this same ratio with other characteristics. So like any good scientist, he tested it. He used that same experiment with the other characteristics in those pea plants. And when he recorded his observations, the same ratio, three to one, came out. So what we're referring to here is the inheritance of a monogenic trait. OK, now monogenic, mono meaning one and genic gene. So basically a characteristic controlled by one gene and it's got two distinct alleles. OK. So tall and short, green and yellow. This is our idea. We then have these two phrases I did use throughout our explanation, homozygous and heterozygous. Again, you should have encountered those at GCSE. Homozygous, homo meaning same, zygous alleles, hetero, different, zygous alleles. So basically you will have homozygous dominant, two of them of dominant alleles, homozygous recessive, both of them recessive alleles, heterozygous, one dominant, one recessive allele. So make sure you know these terms so that you can understand them and use them accordingly. When it comes to Punnett squares, which is probably the way that you did this at GCSE, most people prefer these, then we do have a little tweak from what you're probably taught at GCSE, I'm guessing, is that it does matter where the male and the female go. The female should be the vertical column and the male the horizontal row when we draw these. So let's have a little look then. If we start off with our two heterozygous parents, 
we're just going to do the same as before. So we're going to use tall and short again. OK, so if they're heterozygous, we're going to have one dominant allele, one recessive allele in each case. So what we're going to do with our Punnett square then, let me just try and draw my little square, is now when we're actually drawing these, make sure, obviously, that you do have the space to put the information into it. OK, now what we're going to find is you probably drew it something like this back at GCSE. So like a window when you're drawing it at primary school. What we need to remember, though, is that when we're actually drawing this, then this is going to be our female. And then across the top, that's going to be the male. OK, now in this case, it doesn't matter because they're both heterozygous. So we're going to have one capital and one lowercase t on each side. Obviously, if they were different in their genotypes, it would matter. So remember, female, always that vertical, male, the horizontal. So once we've actually got these, again, we're going to put our gametes in a circle because they are gametes, just to make it nice and clear. And then all we do, whatever's at the top, fill in in the two boxes beneath. And then whatever is on the left, fill it in the two boxes on the right. So we've now got the potential offspring genotypes. What we then need to do is identify their phenotypes. So this one will be tall because we've got two capitals. Tall here, one capital, another tall in the bottom left. And these ones are going to be short. So what do we find? We have three tall, two, one, short. So that's the Punnett square for our monogenic inheritance. We do need to think a little bit about how we can identify a genotype of an unknown plant. So we're going to have a look at something we refer to as a test cross. Now, if we've got an organism which is displaying the recessive characteristic, then we know the genotype of it, because as soon as it shows a recessive characteristic, it's got to have both recessive alleles. It's homozygous recessive. If, however, we're looking at this particular offspring and it's demonstrating that dominant characteristic, we won't always know the genotype. If we started with true breeding parents, then our F1 generation, we will know they're heterozygous because that's the only possible outcome of true breeding parents in that F1 generation. F2, though, we don't know which ones are heterozygous and which ones are homozygous dominant. You can't tell that just from the appearance because quite clearly having either one or both of those alleles being dominant gives you the same phenotype of tall plants in our example. So to work it out, we do this thing called a test cross. What we're going to do then is we're going to take one of those recessive phenotype plants, because remember, we know that's going to be both recessive. So we know it's going to be homozygous recessive. And then we can take our unknown little plant and cross it with that recessive one. When we then observe the offspring, we can work out the unknown genotype based on how many of those offspring demonstrate each phenotype. So what we find is that if all of those offspring show the dominant phenotype, then the unknown parent plant must have been homozygous dominant. Because if we just do a quick little scribble down here, so if we've got our two recessive there, and then if we end up with obviously all of them showing the dominant phenotype, the only way that we could end up with that is if all four of those squares had a dominant allele. So that's the only way we could get it is by having homozygous dominant. If, however, we ended up with half the offspring showing the recessive phenotype and half showing the dominant phenotype, then we must have had a situation where it was heterozygous. Because if you just do the little Punnett square for it, what we can see is 50% of them have got a dominant allele, so they would be the tall ones, and 50% of them only the recessive, so they would be the short ones.
So from that offspring phenotype, we can then say it was heterozygous or it was homozygous dominant, just looking at the ratios of that generation that we've just created. I hope you found this video useful and as always don't forget to subscribe so you know when the latest video is uploaded.